Hey everybody, I'm Tektos and welcome back to Let's Play Endless Space Disharmony. We are playing the Amoeba on Impossible Difficulty in the color pink, because that's what the Amoeba... <laughs> oh man, I can't stay serious. But I tried three times to stay serious and I can't do it, so I'm gonna keep this recording. Yeah. Anyway, I'm um, playing the Amoeba with the color pink, because... Uh, hmm. I guess it's fitting for their playstyle. Uh, being peace-loving slugs they are. Okay, so uh, we are in route to get a second propagator. Aha, uh -huh, propagator. That's their colony ship. And uh, getting this Lynx system over here, and that should set us up okay-ish for the, for the early game. But I'm already pissing my pants, to be honest, about uh, those sewers. Uh, if we look at the points real quick, well, yeah, it's okay. But they already colonized, like, look at that, they got four, they got five planets already. We got a whopping two, and uh, we probably can't afford to get many more, because then we will be really unhappy and um, can't sustain that. So, they got five, and I got that feeling that they're gonna skyrocket. And look at those systems next to them, man. Ah, what? Well, I guess impossible isn't hard enough, so the AI gets an unfair uh, starting position advantage as well. That's okay, we can deal with that. It's fine. I'm not jealous or anything. Just saying. If I had that starting position, you know, I would do well as well. Okay, uh, we can't colonize the lava yet. Oh, did I set up the tech? Ah, I didn't. Okay, so we are going for the um, Offer of Peace, because that does two things for us. First of all, it brings us victory points, but against the... I don't know on, on other difficulties, but against the Impossible AI, it's really, really, really hard to keep peace deals going. Like, you have to be on even points, and they have to be busy elsewhere. Otherwise, it just won't work. They just declare war on you whenever it's, um, it's opportune. So... Um, yeah, but I'm gonna take whatever I can and, well, not here, there, and um, grabbing a peace deal for at least a couple of turns will give us a happiness bonus of plus four, maybe even plus eight if we can get one going with the Hisho, which I really doubt, but we'll see. And, come on, I can't hit that button right. And that's for me, is already worth it. Plus, the um, the peace offer can, can come in handy later, but I seriously doubt that we will be able to win with a diplomatic victory on that difficulty level. I guess you could earn that achievement if you play on a lower difficulty, but on impossible I think it's impossible to get a... Uh, <laughs> get... Um, ooh, that's really sexy. Uh, to get a... Um, what was I going to say? To get a diplomatic victory, yeah. That's nice. Plus two happiness per percent of diplomatic victory. Now, if I could only see my... Can I see that somewhere? Probably someone on there watching this yelling at me like, You idiot, just look to the left, to the right. No, I can't see it. <laughs> uh, can you see it here? Hello. Okay. Nope, I can't see it here. I'm searching for my diplomatic victory points. Uh, I can't really see any. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Doesn't look like we can get any. Anyway, we need to tech up a little bit. Now, I do wonder, do we rush for... the magnetic field generators? Or do we settle some more? I guess the settling is more pressing. So I do want to get the desert systems. I guess beams are also kinda important, because I want to be able at least to defend myself a little bit. So uh, beams are pretty helpful in that sense. After that we'll go for the arid and go for the desert, if nothing will change our plan, of course. And after that, probably go for Neural Robotics and try and somewhat rush those Magnetic Field Generators because they are really awesome. And we do need them pretty fast, otherwise we'll fall behind in tech like nobody's business. Okay, that should 
do it. Yep, that should do it. Uh, one more turn, we get that colony ship. That is nice. Can we do anything here? Nope. Can't do anything here. Mm, still looking fine. Yep. I can click the enter button. <laughs> I'm a little, a little paranoid still. Okay, there we go. Now we got our colony ship. Get that guy ready, create a fleet, and get you moving right away. Because I tend to forget my ships sometimes, and that is not good. Okay, public. Yeah, I feel the public private partnerships more important than the cash right now. Because we do have enough. Like, we don't get. We don't lose any, we don't gain any, basically. Just a little bit of dust, so. That's fine for that stage of the game. And here. We will soon be able to colonize deserts, and uh, we will take uh, this guy here, because it's only minus 10 happiness, but that's going to be offset by the sensor platform. So I can do that, but probably I can't squeeze in the public-private partnerships. Because um, desert colonization is going to take a little while still. Uh, still away uh, four turns for getting the peace trees, then two turns for the... HE batteries, and then two more and six more, so yeah, quite a lot of time. Uh, the hero has leveled, and there we go, we can finally grab the civil engineer, plus 10 happiness, eh, uh, plus 10 happiness, well, plus 10 happiness for me, but <laughs> it's plus 10 production, and that's a really awesome skill. For those of you who really don't, like, seeing endless space for the first time, and don't know that, labor and uh, civil engineer is the combination you want on any administrator hero in the early game. Like those guys. And then go for the efficient schooling, probably, and get plus 20% of that lovely industry. Because industry is pretty good, especially in the early game, where you need to p to uh, rush out those early improvements, and uh, administrating hero does help with that quite nicely. Okay, I feel uh, nothing else to do, so let's take the turn. And here we go. Settle the next system. Hello. Now, again, a little bit boring, but that's my strategy. We go for the industrial zones, because I do need to rush buildings out as fast as possible. And I'm so freaking broke that I can't even afford the 90 dust <laughs> uh, to buy that out. But we're at turn 13, so I guess it's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, looking good here, and looking good here. How are we looking happiness-wise? Yeah. yeah, we can go down a little bit. It's gonna save us one turn on the industrial zones for links, so I guess that's worth it. I do guess. Ah, god, that's still annoying me every time I look at it. Tiny lava with one population. It's gonna be okay late game because we get the gas, um, gas giants that are really awesome, like 20 science per population, ooh, and 20 dust per population. So that's really good. We can turn that and we can terraform the lava and we can also add additional population. Blah blah blah. But it's gonna be late game. Also, this guy here. Maybe I'm gonna go for this guy next. Yeah, probably should do that. And I should try and rush for one of those guys, because that actually has the potential, well, not that much potential. But the root cut system, I really want that. Really do want it. Just a question if I can handle the Hisho, but I, I think I can. Because the, the um, amoeba, they, they don't have any... Well, let's just click the enter button. They don't have any direct um, fighting bonuses, but they just have pretty strong ships overall, because unlike most other races... Come on, I always misclick. Unlike most other races, uh, they do have pretty useful bonuses on their ships. Like here we get the minus 30% minus deflector module cost, and here we get minus... Well, point defense is not that helpful, but here we get defense module minus 30%. That's It's just really really decent, and the uh, flag modules, yeah, it's also helpful. So, um, other ships, they, like the Hishu, for example, they get a lot of bonuses for invasion modules, and fighters, and bombers, and stuff like that, and that's not really, not really helpful, especially with the mysterious fighter system. 
didn't really find any information to that and I'm just too lazy to learn it myself. Like, anyway, I'm um, still sticking to the plan. I'm just thinking if I... Yeah, I do get it. If I skip the laser to be faster on the colonization. Hmm. How much time do we need on that guy? Three turns. We got one turn for that. One. Uh. Yeah, maybe we do switch it up like that. I know it's risky, but I do need some way to get ahead, and I do need those systems ASAP, like as soon as possible. Actually, that guy is not bad. Yeah, that could be a nice early game system. I mean, it's not going anywhere in the long term, but uh, for the early game it's it's okay. Like, we got two planets that give us dust, and we do desperately need that in the near future. Now, I'm just considering, I probably will let the population um, cap out. You know, that's just two turns, and then I'll start my uh, propagator. Yeah, looking good here. Can I... Nope, still can't afford... What? I don't have 60 dust? Oh, come on. That's just pathetic. But, again, what do you expect from pink slugs, right? Okay, one turn for the arid epigenetics. That's good. And we got a little dust bonus coming in from here. Just one turn. And then we will have the full population. And then I can start producing the next pro propagator, was it? Yeah, propagator. <laughs> and uh, then we do need some fighting ships. Because I'm feeling pretty defenseless now. Now the pilgrims finally took their colony. And what do you know? Three colonies already. And uh, they are doing good. Like, we're keeping up for now. But I feel we're gonna get gang raped anytime soon like those those pilgrims man they they they're not good neighbors that's at least for me they're not <sighs> I can't afford a hero and I don't want any of those suckers anyway but it's only 50 turns until I get a new one right so uh, what am I even uh, I'm still annoyed at that like I had a two days of breaks between the episodes and I'm still sitting down here and I'm looking at this seeing those three suckers and uh, it's just pissing me off stupid randomization event I had a fleet commander I had him oh well a Riga system is discovered where is that actually where is that huh must be this one here. Ooh, platform of wine? Nope. Where's the rig? Is it here? No. Is that a rig? No. Huh? Am I stupid? Probably. Possibly. Can't see it. Is it here? Ah, there it is. The Husk of Knowledge, or Riga. Look at that. Wow. So devastated. I wonder what happens. Like, that part of the lore is a little bit missing in Endless Legend when you play it. Because Endless Legend, you're playing on this planet, and you're fighting for dominance of the planet. And it's like the story before Endless Space, but... You don't get to see the, the planet explosion, actually. And the... Man, I, I wish they, they they will make it so you can... Um, like, maybe an expansion pack, you can... You know, leave Origa in Endless Legend. Oh, that would be so freaking awesome. Oh, that would be... Oh, I'm getting the shivers just thinking about that. Imagine that awesome strategy game, and then you can also... Leave the, uh, the actual planet and then start colonizing space. Oh, man. Okay, um... Yeah, still sticking to my plan here. I don't know why I'm clicking so frantically. I'm just 
making sure I didn't forget anything and I do all my turns correctly, even though I probably messed up somewhere down the line, but you guys never let me know anyway, so uh, I'm living happily <laughs> thinking that I'm awesome. Yeah. Okay, uh, what do we get now? Like, sadly, the administrator, they can only get bonuses for... Actually, they can get happiness bonuses, right? Yeah, they can. Can only get bonuses for food and industry, and I don't need the food bonus right now. But I'm gonna go for the um, Labor 3, or Director 3, rather, and get the plus 20% industry bonus, and then use that guy to kickstart new systems, if there's any that I need to kickstart. And that is the plan. Okay, just take a look. Yeah, we s could save two turns on that. So now it's only three. Ah, still can't colonize that home. Uh, two turns, then we can go for deserts. Probably get both weapon systems and then go for... Hmm... Then go for what, actually? I don't need the Ar Arctic right now, because I'm too unhappy. Well, our people are too unhappy to colonize that. I could get the atemporal finance um, with the idea to get the infinite supermarkets, because we will need them in the near future. But um, I don't think it's going to get me anywhere. Like, I really would... Maybe we get the um, geo-industrial plants, neural robotics, and go for the magnetic field generators. And I'm really hoping that by the time we start researching the magnetic field generators, we do actually have enough science output to uh, get it in a reasonable time frame. Because then we will have a couple of those public-private partnerships. Actually, queue up something so I don't mess up. And... That should help us a great deal. Queue that up here as well. And there we go. I did queue up the yeah, propagators going down. Yep, everything looking good. Okay, let's take that in turn. And here come the pilgrims. It's just a scout, so no big deal. Oh, I already got the peace deal. Shit. I'm such an idiot. And they're willing to accept it, so there we go. Got the peace deal. Uh, go away, please. Just leave me alone. Uh, retreat. Just retreat, it's fine. I'm gonna park that guy here. What? Ha! What's that? Got a peace deal, man. Don't come near me. But of course they did that attack before we actually did that affect the peace deal? No, didn't. Okay. Um bum 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 bum. One turn for the appropriator, so I do need to stick some sciencey things in here. Uh two turns here. And yeah, still a long way to go. And that's gonna line up perfectly. Like we got one turn to get the desert colonization. And we got one turn to get the appropriator, and then we can go here. Or do we? Mm, no happiness bonus anywhere. Maybe I'll go here, mutated flora. Yeah, I do like the titanium though. And this guy is fairly protected. So maybe we get the buta system first, and then get the fajis. A little later. Yeah, that seems like the better plan. That seems like a better plan. And I do like to go for the better plan. So let's take a look at the sowers. Oh, we're falling behind. And look at those guys. Uh, still... Man! Two, four, eight, ten systems. Why not? Why don't you? Ten freaking systems. Jesus. Ooh. <laughs> they are scary. Okay, so the pilgrims are expanding towards us. I don't like that. In the words of the Joker, I don't like that one bit. Let's go up here. And see. One turn. 
We are not cash starved. No, we're okay. We can go down one more even. So uh, we will we'll need to do that once we get another system. So we'll let's uh, squeeze in that desert planet first. Before we actually go for the Xeno Tourism Agencies. Because um, he's going to pay himself in terms of happiness. Got plus 10, we got minus 10, that's nice. Um... Yeah, that system's rather decent, I would say. We could transform those um, deserts to arctics later and uh, have them just be our research station, research planet system, whatever. Uh, you are doing research already. Now, let's take a look how fast we will be. Uh, it's down to 12 turns, so I'm liking that a lot already. Down to 12 can't afford to buy this and I could afford to buy the heavy isotopes but I'm a little reluctant I feel like we need the cash in the near future so I'm not gonna not gonna go for that just yet actually why don't we do that I'm just reminded we do need the expansion disapproval reduction for one and I do want this rootcat system I do want it like if the Hisha take that that's gonna be a minor catastrophe I do need that because it's gonna be a really strong system in the late game it's got so much potential it got the um, it, it's got the yeah it got the <laughs> oh man calm down Breathe in, breathe out. It got the gas giant, um, which can be terraformed for more production. And just, it's a big system. We, um, If we get the population increasing techs, that can become pretty huge and uh, thus have a pretty strong production output. So I like that. And also it got another wonder. So we will have two wonders in our control. Not that they are a huge deal but actually what do you do you're just awesome just a borer <laughs> a restoration is needed yeah just why can't i why can't i see what i need can i see it here no i still can't see that probably need the tech for that anyway sorry for that um you are moving. Now the question becomes, do we build another another no I don't think so. We take one turn to finish uh, the uh, unstable isotope manipulation and from there we are gonna start to build a couple of defenders so we can actually fight some guys if we so have to do that. And I got that feeling that we probably will have to fight really soon. So uh, move you out of the way and go in here and um, first of all remove the defender standard. Don't like that. Now. Oh, you're so cute. Look at that. Such a cute. Looks like a sperm. What the hell? I just saw that. Oh man, now I can't unsee it. Ah. <sighs> Well, you're my laser sperm. Okay, so obviously we're gonna go for a couple of those beam weapons. Oh, first of all, support modules. Yeah, I really like the armor, but it's not really worth it. I don't think. What are you good for, actually? Minus 30% shield module tonnage, okay. Plus 30 max damage. Nah, we're just gonna... No special modules that we're just gonna stick them full of lasers. Couple of shields, because they're really cheap. And... Probably a couple of missiles, too. Uh, how many we got left? We got 11 left. Hmm... Three. 
Ah, we are one short to get another deflection module. I hate that. Are the missiles even worth it? That's the question. Not sure if they are. I'd rather get a little more defense. One more of those guys. Actually, if I reduce you by one... Oh, that seems fine. That seems fine. Here we go! Our laser sperm, and we're gonna produce a couple of sperms in our <laughs> in our own system because uh, who doesn't like <laughs> producing the sperms oh man like I'm feeling th this game is not <laughs> it's not gonna be good for my personal development I'm already I'm playing a pink race I'm making peace deals and now I'm producing sperms like my ships look like sperms and I named them like that I'm gonna the next thing is gonna be flying pink sperms over the map that's not a good development, kids. Not a, not a good route to take. Uh, but I'm doing it all for the entertainment, you know. I'm sacrificing my moral integrity <laughs> for the sake of entertainment. And I'm being dramatic. Okay, uh, we got the desert in one turn. Don't forget the planetary improvements. One turn for the first battleship and we are probably dead last yep we're dead last in points so that means I don't care for the points like it's normal to fall behind in early game the problem with that is that the AI has a tendency to uh, declare war when they see you as weak so uh, we do need a couple of ships because they're gonna see us as weak pretty soon because we are gonna fall behind more now the pilgrims they got four systems already can't even keep up with the like I couldn't even produce um, colony ships as fast as the AI. If I only produce colony ships, I could keep up, but then I'm gonna get horribly murdered once they start attacking me. So I feel I'm doing it correctly by slowing it down just a little bit and getting a couple of sperms out, because uh, we need to defend ours. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. I'm a little pressed for time, but we got 30 minutes in, I think, so uh, I'm happy about that. If you're happy about the content and you like what you see, I would appreciate if you let me know, or especially let me know if I'm doing any silly mistakes, like overlooking something or not finding the uh, diplomatic victory points. If someone knows where they are, please, please, please tell me. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I can't find them. And, well, if you don't want to comment or leave a like or whatever, then that's fine as well. Just have a great day and uh, see you in the next episode. Goodbye.